Welcome to Synchronicity, Monday schedule, so far so good. How you doing? How's life? How's everything? Elon Musk bought Twitter and is now doing stuff to it, allegedly, besides just firing people. I I only care about this because I've been on Twitter for like, Jesus Christ, over 10 years, a long time, since like 2009, I think. So it's one of the few places I actually go to, engage with post things on a regular, it's, I do it on a regular basis. It's just, it's a place that I have, uh, enjoyed over a long period of time, primarily because I don't follow a lot of people, (coughs) excuse me. A lot of people don't like Twitter because it's, they think it's a cesspool of like bad takes and mean spirited goblins. And it is, of course, don't get me wrong. But I don't know if people know that you actually get to choose who you follow and what you see. So if you don't like it, that's kind of on you. Now, there's a lot of other things that go into running a social media network. Ultimately, one of the reasons I love Twitter so much is it's just digitized consciousness, right? It's It, it removes this seemingly essential barrier between thinking a thought in your head and speaking it out of your mouth, which is a much different process than thinking a thought in your head and typing it out onto the anonymized world of the internet. I'm not even anonymous on Twitter, and the way I function is significant. Well, it's not significantly different. If you actually know me, it's a pretty accurate reflection of who I am. But for a lot of people, there's that component that is missing that is the filter of should I say this out loud? And when you get onto social media sites, that kind of goes away. So it's digitized consciousness. It's thoughts that are getting expressed out into the world, uh, circumventing the vocal cords and other ways of communication that you would do in person or to another human being. So it's wildly interesting to me to see how people use it, what they get out of it, what they think of it. It's not for everyone, right? Uh, I know most of the people I know in life do not use Twitter on a regular basis. I'm definitely one of the few of my peers and family who really use it. I use it every day. I use it for a lot of things. I use it for crypto. I use it for sports, for the dolphins. Hey, uh, let's get it out of the way right now. Dolphins, six and three. Justin Fields ran for, I think, let me check the stats. Yep, tr- three trillion yards against us. He's their quarterback. He's not supposed to be doing that. The defense has been banged up all year with the Dolphins. I'm not like surprised. People would think this is like some critical fail failure of like Brian Flores leaving or some other. No, they're just, they're banged up. It is what it is. We signed Bradley Chubb, great pass rusher from Denver, signed him to a long extension, traded for him. Good stuff. Anyway, Tyreek Hill's amazing. Jalen Waddle's amazing. Tua is him. I crowned him. I get to do that. I don't know if you know this, but in the sports world, people look to me to crown champions of physical uh, prowess. That's what my role in society is, is I am the person who decides that. So I have officially crowned Tua Tagovailoa as uh, him. So he's great. We're doing good, six and three. We play, who do we play next week? It's just, you know, I'm so happy I forgot. Probably some team that we should beat. So let's beat them. Six and three, good. Dolphins looking like they have a legitimate shot and making the playoffs, potentially even making a run, run, especially if we get some defensive help back, right? Byron Jones, will you play again? Literally, I love that this has turned at least for two to five minutes out of each episode, which you're only getting like 40 minute episodes, a decent chunk. It's just a Dolphins podcast. It is what it is. Hopefully, someday it gets its recognition for being the ultimate source of Dolphins news and hot takes that it is destined to be. We'll wait for that. I'll keep imagining it. Uh, other than that, basically, Twitter is its just a cool place where you get to choose who you want to interact with and what information you want to find. It's a critically, I think, useful text-based, primarily text-based way of interacting with people. Elon has talked about, by the way, I, did, I was cagey last week about Elon. Here's my thoughts on Elon. I, I like him. He's cool in a way. He's also a huge dork and not very funny, and probably not as smart as he thinks he is or other people thinks he is, not taking away. He's like a smart guy, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do this with Twitter. He wants to turn it into uh, WeChat, which is the Chinese version of, uh, like, their their everything app. You can make payments, you know, through crypto, through real money, real money, quote, unquote, uh, texting, like everything is done through that app. So that's kind of what he wants to make Twitter. 
I don't know how feasible that is. There's a lot of arguments about free speech and accurate speech and what's allowed and what shouldn't be allowed and verified users, who gets check marks, who doesn't. I just hope it doesn't blow up. Like most of the things that seem to be based in like uh, institutionalized world uh, now, uh, let's just not blow them totally up. We recognize this is a lot about what this episode is going to be about today. Uh, it, it's this journey from the collective to the individual. If you're a fan of Jessa Reed, she's probably been speaking about this a bunch. She actually brought it to my attention last week. I still got to connect to her, with her about this. I probably should have spoken to her before this episode since I'm going to be dealing with some human design stuff and a lot of stuff that kind of came out of um, human design in terms of really delineating where and when and how the shift that is underway. To be clear, there's always shifts that are underway. It's not like you get the shift happens and then you're just like, oh, we're in the new thing. There's no shifts anymore. It's a constantly evolving, undulating process of creation and destruction. So that's just, let's be baseline about that. That said, there are clear themes that emerge over periods of space and time. And one of them now, which Jessa brought to my attention, which is this journey from collection collective to individual and if you're you've been listening to this podcast you probably recognize that's similar to what a lot of, of the themes that i've been speaking of really placing the power responsibility um, awareness from your individual perspective your imagination whatever you want to call it your consciousness your sense of i am really focusing on that not out of pure selfishness and ego egotism but as a necessary and practical tool for kind of shaping and engaging with the world out there, what we see and perceive with our senses, and how we internally process those things, right? And a lot of what I talk about is kind of seizing the reins, taking the reins, recognizing how we are constantly creating and kind of uh, interacting with things outside of us and how they're generatively caused by our perceptions and internal machinations, right? So that's kind of the theme. You can see this playing out in the world. It is You do not have to go very far into any field to see that big institutions, large creations that have served huge swaths of humanity are not doing that great. If you want to focus on the economic stuff, not hard to lose. Like shit is flying. I saw a poll that said it was like 68% of Americans think it's a good idea to give out more stimulus checks to fight inflation. No, it's not. That's actually that's actually how you make inflation worse. Inflation is just making more money and devaluing what you have. You don't want to give people more money that you print so they spend. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, there are clear flaws in the global economic system. We're seeing this playing out in conflicts that we don't even necessarily know have to do with that. The Ukrainian war is not just a war over territory. It is certainly partially about that. Russia wants strategically, if you ever play the game of risk, Ukraine is quite valuable. It's got a port. I mean, it doesn't really matter so much in risk, but in risk, it connects two continents. It's good. But in the game, like it, it is a valuable geographical location. A ton of produce and grain comes from Ukraine and connects through the sea to other ports around the world. So it's a huge, but it's not really about that. It's partially about energy. And I'm not a global economic strategist. This is not what it's about. But you can tell that there's some other thing going behind the scenes. There's some jockeying for a position on the global economic standpoint. We have the US on one hand, the Western allies, so to speak. You have Russia, China, kind of trying to figure out how this is going to look for the next 100 years because shit is breaking down. There is no debate about that. I don't think you will find many people arguing that these systems are strengthening, that they're getting better. Perhaps if they work for one of those institutions or have a vested interest in it, they will say that. But otherwise, no, not so much. It's not really looking like these systems are doing so well. Look at... Um, you just some media, right? We we opened with uh, Twitter with like these. This is a major media organization that hundreds of millions of people interact with on a daily basis for a variety of things, from news to social stuff to whatever entertainment. This is a massive platform that is literally overnight been purchased by a dude right? It's a dude now being like, I think we should do this. What more of a shift from collective to individual do you need an example of than that? 
will it work? Will the individual be able to save the collective institution? Will it need to adapt to fit into a world where people are asked to kind of engage with their own inner resources and ability to kind of suss through what works for them and what doesn't? I don't know. We'll see. I hope so. I like Twitter. I would hope that it continues to serve the functionality that it has. If it doesn't, there'll be something else, and that will be cool too. We had Vine. Now there's TikTok. By the way, can I get a little bit of credit for being on the TikTok bandwagon before it was cool? Now people just accept it, and they're like, oh, I will. They don't even talk about it. They don't talk about how they just said it was like 15-year-old girls dancing on there like a year ago. It's always been awesome. It's a very cool. Any place someone can engage and share videos that are either of themselves or other people and make funny things and share them, it's going to be a cool thing. And it is a cool thing. Does it potentially send all of our information to China so they can assimilate us into the Borg regime? Maybe. Who cares? It's fun. My point is, is that everything that you look out around you is kind of asking you to be like, all right, nothing out there is going to save me, right? Does this go back into the external factors and the reactions episode? Absolutely. Nothing out there is going to save me. I cannot look outside of myself for some savior. It is not going, I don't know why I said savior like that, savior. But you can't go, it's just, it's going to be a fruitless endeavor at the end of the day. That's kind of the key message that we are being asked to reflect on. Now, does that mean we can't listen to some podcasts, read a book? watch a movie, listen to some music, engage with material from outside of us and find ways to have it work for us? Absolutely not. Of course we still do that. We wouldn't be here if everything would just done. We would have a nuclear Armageddon if this was truly the plan for everyone. Maybe that happens. I highly doubt it. But my point is, is that we are asked to engage with external factors, but we're not asked to place our kind of full 100% uh, what endogenous inside power on another system, right? It's not what we do. It's not going to work. We see these systems collectively breaking down. Now, this is a really interesting theme because it's like, how do we move from something that feels, just to be clear, institutions and the intention behind them are not malicious, per se, right? They're not created to be these, some surely are, but not most of the things you see were not intended to be systems that hurt the individual. <clears throat> Precisely the other way, like they were meant to support the collective, which is a bunch of individuals. But you have to then look at what is being served to you, what is being pitched to you, and make a decision as to how much power you want to give that. And this goes for our own spiritual systems as well that we look at and kind of move through. I have long taken the stance that I'm kind of like of the sampler variety, sampler pack variety. Like that's what I like when it comes to my spirituality. I like looking out at various modalities. I'm re-listening uh, the, to the life of Milarepa. I've been digging into human design. Uh, of course, I use astrology and tarot on a regular basis. I like these tools because they allow me to engage certain aspects of who I am in a way that feels exciting to me. I can't do shit if it doesn't feel exciting to me. Does that sometimes mean I'll start a whole bunch of shit and not follow through on more than like 10, 20% of it? Yeah, sure. That's cool. But I'm okay. When you know that you then are able to be gentler with yourself about when you go into certain things. Some might view that as a flaw. Well, you start a lot of things and you don't finish them. Whatever. Who cares? I finish a ton of shit too. If I look around my life, there's a ton of shit that I have finished and I'm proud of quite a bit of it. Proud of all of it? No, but a lot of it. <laughs> my point is, is that you want to find the tools and strategies that kind of allow you to reflect inwardly as best to the best of your ability and be able to like be like, all right, this is going to make me a functioning, fulfilled, happy, engaged, creatively inspired human being, right? Which brings me to kind of what I've been getting into the past week or so, a little bit more, is this human design stuff. So human design, I originally found out, I actually found out about it like probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, so a long time ago, it, I had seen it floating around and I just kind of wrote it off as like an overly complicated system that blended every system imaginable. You got the I Ching, you got astrology, you got Kabbalah, you got 
so much stuff. And I was just overwhelmed by its seeming complexity that I kind of just wrote it off. The next time I really started to hear about it was P, the fairy, was talking about human design and how she was giving human design readings. I got one with her and I found it interesting. But you know, like when you first start getting readings like within a modality and you don't fully understand it, it's like this magical kind of thing and you don't really fully understand like the intricacies and the inner workings of it. That's where I pretty much remain for at least a couple of years, maybe more. Um, I know that Jessa really likes it. I know that P really uses it. I know a lot of people have gained kind of... Um, benefits from understanding its workings, but I never really kind of did the deep dive into it. So I started the deep dive this past week because the guy who founded it, and one of the other things, and I will cop to this, that originally turned me off to it, is it's only like 35 years old. It's this Canadian white dude with the hat who heard a voice for eight days telling him all this shit, and he changed his name to Ra, like, who 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 or something i fucked his name up but whatever and i'm like all right i mean listen i get it if a voice talks to you and you create a kind of new system and it's good and people get from it like ah, who am i to judge but on another hand i'm like what what but i guess this is how stuff start and i think one of the uh, the the real kind of gifts of recognizing your imagination being kind of a creator of everything is that like why wouldn't that work why couldn't you apply kind of looking at a system metaphorically and psychologically as being able to teach you fundamental truths about yourself and the universe and the multiverse, why wouldn't that apply to everything? You could theoretically look at the Miami Dolphins and gain as much wisdom if you understand, so it had to look at the subtleties of the nature. I just assume I'll become fully realized and enlightened when they win the Super Bowl. That makes sense to me. Makes sense to you? Makes sense to me. So theoretically, no system... I mean, if you're turned off by it, don't engage, obviously. That goes without saying. It's like watching a show you don't like because people said it was good. That's stupid. Don't do that. But if you like the show, you don't have to write it off. Now, I'm reminded one time of like Ryan Singer, a uh, comedian, podcast person, go check him out, he was reading this book and he was super jazzed about it. And then like we spoke a few weeks later. And he was like, yeah, I, gotta, I had to stop reading the book because the guy was a Nazi. <laughs> it started getting in like eugenics and like, taking over the world in a pure race. And I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. So obviously don't, you know, follow stuff like that. That's not going to be a hugely beneficial uh, addition to your life. But if you find some truths and element things in a system that benefit you, absolutely look into it. Get excited. See what's going on. There's nothing wrong with that. So I've been doing that with human design. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to rely on it um, and use it as a tool going forward, but I am in the learning kind of stages. And so there's a bunch of stuff that you can get into with human design. It's really ab abundantly... I don't want to say complex. There's just a lot of shit going on. Anytime you combine like I Ching, astrology, Kabbalah, all this, it's a lot. And it all overlays over itself and it has to do with these energy centers and which gates are empowered and how the flow of energy works through you and your kind of authority, where you work from in your body with one of those energy centers, what type of kind of being you are. Um, you may have heard the terms gen generator, manifestor, projector, reflector, manifesting generator, all these things. And they're just kind of describing a way of being and how you connect and are put together and kind of hopefully an optimal perspective that allows you to kind of look into themes of your life and who you are as a person and see if you can't get some flow going on. Because a lot of us have found things that work in our lives and we've found things that don't work. And sometimes putting those things together in a way, kind of like a puzzle that allows us to kind of be the person we assume ourselves to be in a way that feels as effortless or as fulfilling as possible is what we're doing. Right, and so this is a this is a fun thing we're doing here. This is not meant to be something that you take as gospel. And if your human design chart says you're a hermit two four, I guess I'm a hermit two four. That you have to be alone all the time, and you know other people. But I, some of the things I found out definitely resonated on a very strong level, and that's partially because they're using themes from astrology and the I Ching, two very powerful and well versed, just like really well thought out systems of energy mapping are working together harmoniously. So the two, four hermit, for instance, like I have found in my life, I genuinely love being around people. I better, I have a large family. 
I like being around people. I like engaging with people. I like sharing things. I like speaking to other people, sharing their company. Um, but if I don't get alone time, if I don't get time to be by myself, I don't do well. I don't do well. I, I don't know how else to say it clearly. If I don't have my own space and energy for at least hours at a time, hopefully, I know, days is very optimistic in my life, but a day, but hours at a time, I start to kind of like get stuck. I start to get agitated, frustrated would probably be the right word. And so I've learned this over many years. I mean, how how often do you even get to be alone in life? And then when you're alone, a lot of people are like, I don't want to be alone. I wish I had someone. You're so lucky to be alone. If you are alone and don't have someone, and this is not uh, 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 any reflection on who the people are. I love the people around. But like cherish your solitude, especially if you're a 2-4 hermit, right? So what is 2-4 hermit? Like what does this mean? So the four line, I think they call it, is what's known as an opportunist, right? So I'm a hermit opportunist. And this doesn't mean someone who just takes advantage of other people, but it means that my network and my group of people who I work with is critically important to me. I like to work with other people. I like to function with other people. Then on the other side of that, I also like to be alone. So I'm annoying, basically, is what my chart is telling me. And I have to deal with that. So there's other ways of looking at your chart, all of these energy centers and what they kind of relate to, where you can suss out whether something is right for you and using the correct energy center becomes kind of critically important. And then there are these gates and these gates connect to other energy centers and are activated both with the conscious and the unconscious kind of... uh, paradigms, right? So you have a conscious gate, you can think of it, you use it, and then this stuff kind of working underneath the surface that also is connected to the stuff. So an example of a gate, I have all of my, not all of them, but I have a ton of gates in my throat center, right? So this is relating to communication and how I engage with other people. But an example of a gate would be this gate 16, right? Enthusiasm. So gate of self-expression, success and skills, developing talent through repetition, be careful and well-disciplined. So this is something that I have activated that is a conscious aspect of my being, right? So I am aware of this. It's not below the surface. And of course, when I look at my life, that's totally fucking true, right? I really do, like, one of my best skills for in life is being able to truly be enthusiastic when dealing with other people and also, like, getting good at stuff to the point where I feel like I'm very confident in that, right? Whether that's manifestation or music or speaking or whatever it is, that is how I develop my skills. So, For me, I look through all these things. I'm not going to just go over my chart like a fucking egomaniac, but I do want to talk about how at least if there's something that you're looking for, you can pull up your chart on Jovian, J-O-V-I-A-N.com. You just need your birth time and date and where you were. It's pretty simple shit. It's kind of worth looking at. So this is something that I'll probably be referencing somewhat in the future. Listen, if I come back in two weeks and I'm like, this sucks, this is wrong. I got con. This is some bullshit. Then I will certainly say that. Now, I will say one potential pitfall with this human design stuff is that there's percentages of people who make up each kind of type, right? So generators are the most common. I'm a generator. It's 70%. I have found that people who are in the less common, uh, like projectors and reflectors, You may feel a little bit special about yourself there. Don't get too caught up in that specialness. If it is ultimately, if it's a system that helps you gain awareness about who you are and what's going on in your life, that's good. That's good. We like that. But if it's something that's really just kind of strengthening aspects of yourself and of identity that aren't serving you, that's no good. We don't like that. It's no good. So basically, Find and engage with this stuff as you see fit. You may be getting into astrology right now, specifically. You may be getting into the I Ching. You may be getting into just like energy as a thing that exists and how do we deal with it. Find something that speaks to you at the moment. Pursue it. Be engaged. But don't feel like you have to like sign up like you're joining a cult. You don't have to shave your head and wear beads and start saying weird shit. That's 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 a choice. It's cool if you want to do that, but it's more kind of usually like a costume than an actual kind of functional aspect of an identity. Just be aware of that. But 
I have found so far that this is, well, kind of a little tough to kind of crack the initial nut of what human design is, seems to be pretty cool. And I do try to have that compartmentalization where I don't want to think about the guy who got this kind of channeled information to talk about it. But, you know, put it to the side. Put it to the side. Was he an interesting, weird, kind of wacky dude who maybe stumbled upon something pretty cool? Probably. That's what it seems like. Because it does seem that we have these internal patterns, these designs as humans that allow us to kind of function and work correctly. And if this is true, that I think that the the real time for this big shift is spoken about in 2027. If this is true, and we really are witnessing the move from the collective to the individual, you want to strengthen that sense of individuality, individuation, wholeness, self-actualization, realization, whatever you would like to call it. Like, strengthen that motherfucker, because you're going to need it. Doesn't mean you won't have groups of people who are there to help you. Doesn't mean you won't have uh, support systems that really help you and, you know, support you. Support systems that support you, Noah? Sure. Okay, whatever. You need those. They'll be around. Your support systems are a direct reflection of what you believe, right? So they exist because that's their support for you. But individually, working with your own stuff and your own patterns and your own beliefs, right? That's going to be critically important. Like to the point where like this is essentially like I've been trying to figure out like why why do I talk about the things that I talk about on this podcast? Why have I been sharing these things for as long as I have without completely getting sick of them myself and assuming other people aren't? And the numbers say you guys aren't. You do like this stuff. Um, it's because this is like, this is a reminder to myself as much as anyone else, like focus on your shit. This is a lifelong journey that you will not escape, right? It's going to be you this whole time. and You will not get out of it until you die. And that's probably not very soon for the vast majority of you listening. And even if it is, you may come back to a very similar place with very similar issues, and you'd probably want to focus on these things and carry them through. So direct your consciousness to like really focusing on what can you do as an individual to strengthen your conviction, your faith, your belief, belief in yourself. That's why we talk about a lot of these principles with Neville Goddard. It's why we kind of ultimately you know, test them and believe them if we test them and they bear out truth, right? If you're remembering something when you imagine something greater than what you have, right? Just think about this. If you're remembering back when you imagine something that's more than what you are now, you're basically saying that I'm not imagining that now. I'm not imagining it fulfilled. And so if this is true that imagining creates reality, you have to change that memory and become aware of what you're imagining right now. Let's just talk about this. If you have imagined something and it's like, ah, yes, I imagined that thing and it did not happen or it has not happened, eh, wrong, strike, try again. Go back to the point where you imagine and go, it is happening. It is happened. It has happened, right? That is the mindset. So just notice these things. This kind of is more like in the reactions type episode, but this is a key skill when we're dealing with, you know, your seemingly limitations, right? Don't dwell upon the means here. You dwell upon the end by defining it. So there's nothing more powerful than defining an end and assuming it to be true. That's the game. That's the journey. That's the quest. That is how we do it. Now, we will throw every possible obstacle typically in our way to kind of really hammer this point home some of which are comfortable and some of which are not. But this is the name of the game. Uh, if these institutions are not going to be around to protect us, and it's questionable whether they've been protecting us even for you know most of my life. I'm 39, but you know half of my life, I don't think institutions have existed to really support me as an individual and make sure I'm getting the most. Nor were they really totally designed to do that, maybe in intention, but not act in actuality. If that's true, what are you going to do about it? You're going to get a job. You're going to learn a skill. You're going to find something that's secure. Go into that. Exist in that for as long as possible until you realize that's not ultimate security. Like, what are you going to do? 
what options are you really left with? Right? I don't say this ominously. I'm just saying, like, you what really? What are the answers to these questions? What is gonna make you happy and fulfilled? What ultimately like would make one who is an omnipotent creator, ultimately, at its core, what would make you happy? Mm-hmm. Creating and realizing that power? Probably. That's probably it. You know when you're off center, you know when you're off balance, you know when you don't feel right. You're not unaware of that. If you were unaware of it, you would probably feel fine. So your choices are to be unaware of how you're feeling and just basically play the ignorance is bliss game or or recognize kind of the feedback that you get about where you are and what you would like to be and assume yourself to be that which you would like to be. That gives you a clear goal to focus on, a definition. Try it out. Denise is fond of saying that, like, there's no choices in life. And, of course, on one level, I really agree with her that, like, we kind of pull ourselves through this unconsciously as much as anything else. But you do have conscious choice. And the way you experience things, even if it's ultimately all an illusion, is to direct your awareness at something and either self-identify or self-reject that. When you self-identify with the loveliest parts of your being, the truest aspects of yourself, the person you know yourself to be, more often than not, what type of results do you think you'll get? If you associate with the unlovely parts of yourself, the things you don't like, the things you're doing wrong, the fears and insecurities of your life, what do you think you will experience? This seems unfair if the circumstances of your life are not where you want them to be right now. It seems unfair. I'm not denying that. Give up the concept of fairness. It is ultimately very, very fair because it's up to you to determine what you you want to experience and how you would like to get there and how you would feel as if you were there. So this is both a liberating and annoying message. If I were to put down kind of the theme of this podcast, it would probably be hopefully not that annoying, but liberating and annoying. And it is, but ultimately way more satisfying than like, would you really even feel satisfied if an institution just like had held your hand and walked you through everything? You didn't have to do anything like a baby. Those types of people get made fun of, right? Like credit to like the nepotism people who are actually talented. You're getting completely, no one's going to notice that. You're just getting nepotism. You know, you're not getting any real credit on your own. You, you didn't have a choice. They're your hand, you got a safety net the whole time. You're not really that scared. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. You don't want it. You want a little bit of challenge. You want a little bit of friction. Do you have sex? Do you like sex? That's friction. Hopefully not too much. You need some lubrication, but you know what I mean. That's the energy of creation, so it's not a bad thing. Look up your human design chart. I think it'll be useful. I'm not going to offer readings on human design. Um, I don't have the knowledge to do that now, nor do I feel that it is something I should be doing, but I've been enjoying getting into it. It's pretty cool. And these broader themes, like there's one thing to look at human design for your individual chart and understand yourself. It's also you can use it to look at themes kind of globally and over time that I think is particularly interesting as we all kind of recognize there's some major transition energy. Major fucking transition. Uh, Like Jesus, chill the F out with the transitions. It's not going to happen, but it is what's going on. So ultimately like find something that, you know, hopefully is a map of energy that works for you. Okay, cool. Uh, This week, I think it's looking like Thursday night. We will do a live stream on the Patreon for patrons. I'm going to be working out a schedule for more streaming. I just sense intuitively that is going to be something that's important for this, whatever this is. And for me, uh, I like, the idea of what we can do with streaming in terms of multimedia and engagement. So that will most likely be dual streamed on YouTube and Twitch. Um, Just stay tuned for details on the Patreon for that, and we'll be getting some guests in. Um, My previous attempts at streamlining my schedule did not work because guess what? There's a lot of moving parts. I got three kids. They're all not the same baby mamas. Blah. So I will be jumping on a live stream this week and we'll just try to figure out a schedule. Like I I know these things work. Actually, I actually got a payment from Twitch. I wasn't even expecting it because I streamed a bunch like six months ago and they sent me some shekels and it wasn't nothing. So it does even work as like a monetization strategy. But just like I know that means that people actually like want to do that. 
and we have the capabilities to do it. And we'll try to make it like a substantial stream, like just hanging out and having fun. So that's cool. We'll do that. Otherwise, readings are open. They're limited. They're not like open, open, because my schedule does not permit that. But, you know, I'm probably getting like, what, five, ten of those a week. So they're, they're, they're popping off. Um, we have fun there. It's good times. That's it, right? Yep, that's it for this week. I will see you next week. And stay tuned for details on upcoming guests, events, and other fun events. We'll be. Bye-bye.